az a baj, hogy ilyenkor, mikor the trouble is, when you have to make a presentation afterwards, you are filled with new ideas. And I was given a lot of thought by Gabor Kapitán, who said there is a kind of notional thinking and a, a kind of symbolic thinking. And if Elemir Hankish had a special characteristic, he was symbolic. He was not analytic in his way of thinking. He, he had a way of thinking which stepped over borders. Well, he could make a comparison between science and po politics, between to be or should. He, he, he didn't look at these kind of diversities. But allow me to call your attention to the analysis of artifacts and fine art. Uh, well, he said that thinking is the most important thing, and maybe in symbolic uh, ideas and symbolic concepts, thinking is at the core of, of things. Now, my in my presentation, I would like to talk a little bit about his way of thinking or mindset. It's difficult to translate into English. But when I was first asked to give a presentation, I thought I would talk about Hankish as, a soci as the sociologist. But I should have needed some preparation to give a proper analysis. But the way he acted here in Kursag, when we talked about the research of values, uh, he actually showed and demonstrated that the value structure of the United States in the 1930s was very similar to that of uh, uh, in Hungary in the 1980s. But he said that empirical data could not really uh, support this, but he was deeply convinced that this, this was typical. So it's, it, it's a kind of a very telling uh, example. And not knowing that I would not have uh, the right amount of time, I don't know how much time, but I will tell you what I prepared with. Every person, every thinker has a kind of style, a uh, thinking style, the way they choose the topic, the way they set out to uh, debate. They have a kind of uh, chain of thinking. And for me, it was a rele revelation to read through another hunkish volume and to realize how unique he was in his way of thinking. And I grew convinced from his writings from before the transition into democracy that Hankish was good at making art of small things. He was not concerned of big theories. He was not concerned with big political issues and debates and ideological debates. He was working from the Anglo-Saxon uh, books, but he never dwelled on the communicative uh, uh, um, theory of communicative action. He was relying on his own senses, and I will give you an idea how you can interpret that. He looked at the micro-actions of everyday life, he tried to capture small minutes uh, or small Promethean moments. He was not concerned about large things. He preferred silent issues, small transitions, small uh, meticulously drawn bits. And when he talked about socialism, he relied or, or focused on the, uh, uh, the period between the 1950s and the 1980s. And he was concerned about the illusions that he could trace and what was referred to as goulash communism in the West. How come it was not built ideologically into a uniquely Hungarian thing? Uh, maybe it could have been realized uh, during the, the Kader regime. Another unique character was a kind of uh, solidarity with the small uh, everyday people. And he was always uh, commiserative. He always felt what the, the, the everyday people felt 
and he was a very humane person. He was interested in the people of the street. Uh, also, when he was complaining about corruption, he actually looked at history and society uh, from a, uh, mm, a damp, from a perspective from from uh, looking above. When he wrote about second society in the 1980s, in the mid 1980s, he didn't talk about uh, selling his uh, work, which was uh, uh, prohibited at that time. And actually, he could take his name off from the Paris study booklets because he was otherwise he wouldn't have been allowed to return home back then. And because after 1956, uh, he spent 10 months in prison, uh, remanded in custody, as they said, he wrote something very logical, but he didn't sign the protest uh, in 1978. And I would like to quote him that he followed Istvan Bibor, maybe not realizing this, but he did. He had a reserved kind of uh, behavior, and he had no opportunities to be very active in public life and to be really demonstrating. Uh, he had just no sense to do that, basically. What I would like to add to this uh, is a quotation from the philosopher Hegel when he says, going back to small logic, that there are some phases and stages of uh, a thought. There is um, the feeling, a sentiment, there is the sense, and there is the mind. We shouldn't stand or we shouldn't stop at sentiments. We should move on to, to, to um, go as far as we reach the mind, the mindset. And some people have great sentiments, and these people usually have great ideas, great concepts. And he was such a person. Elamir Hankish was capable of grasping uh, the essence of things before, uh, behind the everyday scenes or veils of everyday life. He was reluctant to discuss large ideological issues. In the 1960s, uh, we, there was a discussion of whether it's the possession or the work that um, determines society. There was a big discussion about this, Zsuzsa Ferge and others involved. But he was not interested in this problem, really. What he wanted to achieve or talk about was the issue of Struc the structure of the society, the issue of identity, the issue of false alternatives like poor people and rich people, those down there and those up there, those who worked a lot and others who didn't, those in power, those outside uh, uh, the, the power. So he didn't actually uh, touch up on such neurologic and he was looking at symptoms uh, but Hegel said that uh, what you can see is the seeming reality Hanke said that there was no social structure what we could see it was a state structure but anyway he was trying to demonstrate that he was concerned about the problems at hand. Finally, allow me to say that in the study, in the second society, I think he, he shows his real terrain, his real uh, interest. He knew everybody, and he was relying on others, uh, other concepts. But at the end of his, st his study, he says, conjures up different ideas and opportunities. He, he, he actually foresaw the transition into democracy. He talked about a new economic model, which is a kind of self-directive socialist economy based on culture. And culture is 
a combination and a rich cooperation of, of, of different consciousness. Uh, he talked about democratic publicity. He talked about the trade unions. He talked about trade unions as the representative functions and dominance, social involvement in decision making, and and uh, this is what you could you could say when you talked about publicity. And that was all up to which you, he could go in the 1980s. And finally, when he grew 80 years old. There was a conference uh, organized by Professor Mislivet. Everyone was there. Everyone was there. We had Katalin Kondor and Chaba Gombar, everybody from representing the left and the right. And Hankish sort of realized a kind of intellectual position, which was a freely floating intellectual, freely floating in space. But this intellectual has a very important function, and allow me to quote from a manuscript again. In 1944, there was a discussion in England going on. Uh, Polanyi and Monheim about the responsibility of an educated person. The spirit, the public spirit, does not determine a social order, but it's a kind of freely floating group of intellectuals which, whose function is to reproduce itself from a social base. And this is not a hierarchical system. It's not closed, but it's dynamic, it's flexible, and it's perpetually changing, but it's full of problems. But I think this was very typical of Hankish himself. Thank you.